In this video, we're going to see common source stage with triode load. As we have discussed, having a MOSFET as load is very good and better in integrated circuits. Let me take a circuit diagram with a triode load where M1 is NMOS and M2 is PMOS. We want M2 to be in triode region so that it works like a voltage variable resistor so that we can choose VB we can make sure it offers a resistance that we want but in triode region the voltage drop across the transistor is going to be small because the resistance itself is small so M2 should be in triode region which means the VDSP magnitude is going to be less than magnitude of VGSP minus magnitude of VTP and M1 should be in saturation region so that this will be the primary transistor which will actually amplify in that case VDSN is nothing but V0 V0 should be greater than Vn minus Vtn so overall we can say that the output voltage should be greater than Vn minus Vtn and it should be less than VDD minus the voltage drop across M2. So it will be VDD minus magnitude of VDSP. So the advantage of having a triode load is it's going to take a very small voltage headroom because of this fact that VDSP magnitude should be less than magnitude of VGSP minus magnitude of VTP. But the current that is flowing through PMOS transistor, which we always keep it as IDP, which is going into the drain terminal. And here we have IDN going into the drain terminal of the NMOS. As they are in series, IDP magnitude should be equal to IDN. The output voltage swing range is going to be a bit high for this kind of triode load common source stage because the voltage headroom taken by the PMOS is less because it is operating in triode region. In fact, voltage swing is basically the range within which the output signal can change without making the transistors go into unintended region of operation. Now let's see the small signal analysis of this common source stage. First, let's look at the voltage gain. Now coming to the AC analysis, the DC source should be made zero. So VDD should be made zero. And of course, VB should also be made zero. But if you look at M2, how it is operating, it's operating in linear region. In in fact, deep triode region where it works as a voltage variable resistor. If you fix VB, its resistance is going to be a fixed value. So hence, so in place of M2, I'm going to take a resistance of R on 2, the 2 indicating M2 transistor. And as VDD is grounded in AC analysis, we have taken a ground and coming to M1, I'm going to show the MOS transistor and we have a R01 here indicating the channel in the modulation of transistor M1 and we have the input signal applied here. An output is taken at this point. Now this can again be drawn in a way which looks simple due to the input change VGS there will be a current flowing here that will be GM VGS. Now this GM VGS will be going through this parallel combination of this resistance which will be R01 in parallel with R02. And of course this current will be flowing in this direction making this side positive this side negative but our output reference is in reverse. So hence we can write that V out is equal to minus the current flowing through parallel combination of resistance is GM times VGS, VGS is V in times R01 in parallel with R02. So hence we can say that voltage gain of the stage is minus GM times R01 in parallel with R02. Obviously, we know looking at the input that we will see an open circuit gate to source. Hence, the input resistance would be infinity just like we have seen in the previous videos of common source stage. So, hence I will say input resistance 
Rn will be infinity. And now let's look at the output resistance. Now output resistance R out is equal to Vx over Ix at Vn is equal to 0. So let's take this small signal equivalent circuit here and make the input node grounded making Vn is equal to 0. But in this case as Vgs is equal to 0, Gm times Vgs will be 0. Now we have Vx here due to which Ix is flowing, it will flow through the parallel combination of R01 and R02. Hence Vx will be equal to R01 in parallel with R on 2 times Ix. Hence we can say R out is equal to R01 in parallel with R on 2. Now the other parameter we need to look at is the transconductance of this stage which is Gm is equal to Isc the short circuit current at the output divided by the input voltage which means we are going to short circuit the output making V out is equal to 0. Now the small signal equivalent circuit would look like this where the output node is grounded and we take Isc to be here because the voltage at this node will be 0 there won't be any current flowing through R01 and R02. So the entire Gm times Vgs should be equal to Isc. So let me write this here. Isc should be equal to Gm times Vgs where Vgs is equal to Vn. Hence when we write Isc over Vn, this is nothing but Gm which is equal to Gm. So which means the transconductance of this entire stage is equal to the transconductance of the NMOS transistor we have which is M1. In fact let me put this GM1 because we have named this M1 transistor. Once we find the transconductance and output resistance we can actually find directly the overall voltage gain of the stage. That is overall voltage gain of the stage will be equal to minus GM times R out. So this will be equal to the transconductance of this stage is small gm which is in fact gm1 times R out. R out is R01 in parallel with R on 2. This is the end of this video. See you in the next video.